The next major software-defined topic that I want to cover is software-defined WAN. What is it? Who uses it? And where does it really fit into your enterprise? Let's go. Software Defined WAN is a product offering in Cisco's line of products, but it's more than that. It's actually a concept. It's a way that we configure how traffic flows through our WAN. I mean, WAN stands for Wide Area Network. The idea being that we have a network that extends beyond one premises. We have an, a wide area network that's maybe going out to the internet or connecting branches together. So in the old days, we had things like MPLS. We would go to a service provider and say, hey, we would like layer two or layer three connectivity between these two branches. Actually, you know what, let's draw this out. Yeah, this is better. If I had two branches here, we'll call this branch A, and over here, we'll say this is branch B. One of the options that we had is we could use an ISP and build connectivity through their internet services. And this could either be layer two connectivity or layer three connectivity. And we just pay them to handle building a tunnel through their services so that our branches are easily accessible and secure to each other. But then came along, you know, the speed and reliability of the internet. Gone were the days of 56K dial-up modems and needing T1 connectivity between our sites. Now we deal with speeds like one gig a second, two gig a second, 100 gig a second. Whatever the case is, we've got fiber and it's reliable and it's fast. So we created protocols that built tunnels over the internet to each other, right? This would be things like IPsec or GRE. The idea being that we didn't necessarily need MPLS as much, but we could build tunnels from one branch to another and still get that layer two or layer three connectivity by just configuring IPsec or GRE ourselves. But here's the thing, configuring this, especially in a large environment with multiple sites, let's draw a C and D site up here too. Uh, now we get more and more complicated because now we need things like a mesh. And maintaining and configuring IPsec, especially from command line or even things like ASDM, uh, that was complicated and that was hard. But then WAN connectivity to sites became even more complicated because we had to have QoS for phone services between branches. Uh, we needed to filter out traffic like video streaming or direct that out a different pipe. We could even mention things like creating route policies so that specific routes are prioritized over other routes. Basically, the point that I'm driving at here is that as our WAN infrastructure became more and more complicated because we kept growing and growing and growing, our ability to manage this became more error prone because it's all done through command line, right? SD-WAN simplifies that by giving us one login and a few clicks to manage the whole thing. It automatically handles the load of configuration by just deploying what we want. The easiest way that I can show you SD-WAN in action is going to be to take a look at Cisco Meraki's SD-WAN capabilities before we jump in to the Cisco SD-WAN product. So if I get logged into the Cisco Meraki dashboard yet again, under the security and SD-WAN section, I can check out SD-WAN and traffic shaping. We can see things like how we can configure our uplink connectivity. We can change things like enable load balancing with just one click. I can even choose to filter out traffic to say, Facebook and throttle Facebook down to as low as 50 KBs per second. All I have to do then is click save and I've just simply deployed traffic shaping and load balancing to my firewall with a couple clicks. Pretty stinking powerful, right? Because it's so simple and easy to get this up and running. But SD-WAN, the Cisco SD-WAN capability, takes that up a notch and really ratchets it up for the major enterprise who needs to apply policies to individual sites, firewalls, or groups of firewalls. Let's check it out. So you can see pretty quickly the power of Cisco's SD-WAN. We get logged in and there's a little dashboard here that shows me my device statuses, who's up and running, when my last reboot was, what my bandwidth looks like. I even have application-aware routing that I can check out right here. So if I have apps that, are spe that have specific routes that need to be taken, uh, I've got insights into this from this pane right here. I can then do things like set up specific monitoring dashboards, configurations, tools, templates, and so on, I can manage my entire WAN and branch connectivity infrastructure from the single pane of glass. 
So the concept of software-defined WAN makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? We're using a web front end, basically software, to configure how our branches and how our QoS policies and how our workflows are being transmitted over the internet, over our WAN infrastructure. Whether we're using Cisco's SD-WAN product or even maybe the Firepower Management Center to control outbound traffic, or maybe we're using the Cisco Meraki product, whatever the case is, SD-WAN has greatly simplified Simplified, one of the more complex things that we've had to configure as network engineers, and that's our WAN connectivity. So that's SD-WAN, y'all. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one.